Hi everybody, I am recording this video to show you a preview of what the homework was. And I am doing this because usually for loops um, are a little challenging at the beginning, which is completely normal. And the reason why is because uh, they are a way to uh, tell our machines to do things for us automatically without us having to repeat the process over and over again. So basically, the way that we learned it is that a for loop is a way to tell our turtle here, Tommy is our turtle's name, uh, uh, to repeat uh, something a certain number of times. So I'm going to write a little bit of code here on top, uh, just to summarize what we saw last time. So basically, for uh, each side, uh, so let's first define what this is going to do, and this is going to draw a square. So before we saw that in order to draw a square, you needed to ask Tommy to move forward a certain number of steps and then make it a go right. Um, uh, how many degrees it turns right depends on how many sides your shape is going to have. We know that for an, a square um, is 360, which is the total number of tiny steps that we need to uh, to make to draw a circle divided by the total number of sides that a square has, which is 4. And 360 divided by 4 is 90. So anyway, so it's, it's not crucial that you understand where this 90 comes from, as long as you associate it with the idea of making a square with it. So here we have Tommy moving forward and then going to the right. So that's exactly what it does. It goes straight. And then in, in Tommy's world, there is no, no down, really. There is just left, right, front, and back. And uh, for us, left looks like up and right looks like down. But it's just our perspective. The way that Tommy understands this is that the down for us is right for it. Right? So that's why we tell it right. So now that Tommy is facing to the right, we need to ask Tommy to... Uh, do the same process again. And what is going to happen is that Tommy is going to go straight and then turn right and then go down and then look to the right again. So that's going to give us two sides of a square. So if we want to draw a, a complete square, we need to repeat this process two more times. And what I mean is uh, repeating the step of Tommy going forward and then Tommy going right. So we need there is one and there is two a total of four pairs of steps. So this time Tommy makes a square. So that is how we saw it in the first lesson. And in the last lesson, um, our second lesson, we learned that for loops exist so that we don't need to write all of this. Instead, what we do is defining a, a type of, um, uh, is given name to the objects that are going to be uh, that are going to be are going to where we're, we're going to be um, taking at every step. So we named the number of steps that we're going to be taking when drawing our shape, and we write our for loops like this. So we know that a square has four sides. So what this does is telling the computer, okay, four each side in a list of numbers that goes from 0 to 3. From 0 to 3 is 0, 1, 2, and 3. So even though the final number is 3, if you count how many items our list has, you're going to end up at 4. So you have 4 items because we are counting the number 0. So uh, the computers uh, learn by this. The computers count at zero. So, so that is why. So that's why we need this range four. And the reason why we, sell, we chose four is because four is the number of sides that a square has. So for each side that we want to draw, then we repeat the step. First, please go forward, Tommy. And we ask Tommy to move forward, and then we ask him to go right. Okay, and that's it. 
So if you look at this, uh, at the execution, there is our first square, that first square, and then following right away this second square that is identical. So the first square was drawn by these lines from line 10 to line 17, and it is the, the, uh, the eight lines of code that define a square. So we are going to get rid of this because we don't need it anymore. And then uh, we're just going to stick with this. So we reduce from eight to only three lines of code. Okay, and Tommy is doing the exact same thing, drawing a square. So what would happen if I change the total number of, um, of uh, items, the total number of sides uh, from four to five? What do you think is going to happen? A. Would it draw a pentagon, uh, pentagon or B, would it just draw uh, one of the sides of the square again? I'm going to let you think about that one. I am not going to give you the solution, so just change the number in here to find and execute the program. Okay, so that was a really quick, uh, um, a really quick summary of what we saw last week. So there is the part, uh, so let's start talking about homework. So the first thing that I want you to notice is that here I am already giving you a list of items. My list of items contains uh, something red, something orange, something green, and something blue. It's only the words, the words uh, that, that define the color. And the reason why I'm giving you colors is because we are going to use the name of these colors to change the total color into that color. So, the first thing that I would like you to do is to add more colors. You can create something like pink or maybe black or white, etc. But I would like you to create a list, well, the list is created, I would like you to expand the list so that you have 10 items in total. The reason why I'm asking you this is because we are going to start drawing shapes that have more than four sides, that have up to 10 sides, and we want one color for each side of the shape. So that's the first assignment. The second that the second assignment is to create a variable that is going to be named repeat that is going to contain a number between 1 and 10. If you remember, in the last classes I've been, I have been talking about variables as kind of uh, vessels, like things that you put stuff inside and then you name it whatever you want. So in this case, I'm giving you the name, so the name of the variable should be repeat. And what it contains is a number. And what I want you to do is to, to, to define one number. It can be any number from one to 10. Once you have it, we move to the question number three. And I'm telling you that a circle has 360 degrees. So divide this number that you created here. In my case, I'm going to say, OK, I want a number 5. So you are going to divide this number uh, 360 degrees by the variable repeat. And it's going to look something like this, except here, I am dividing 360 by another variable that I invented, that I made it up. So if you simply copy and paste this, it's not going to work. So you need to use your variable here. So I'm going to let you decide which variable goes in here. And then um, we also want Tommy to move forward 100 steps. So if you go back to the example of the square, this is exactly the same as telling Tommy to move forward and then turn right a certain amount of degrees. So this time, how much we turn to the right will depend on the type of shape that we want to draw. So this time, you are not going to have 90. 
unless what you have in repeat is 4. Because 360 degrees divided by 90 it gives you 4. What will happen if you divide 360 by 5? Um, by 5. What will you get? Okay, so that is the third part of the assignment. At the end of the third part, you should be able to draw a shape that has as many sides as number, uh, as, as many sides as defined by the number that contains the variable repeat. Then in the part four, I ask you to change the color um, that the turtle has at, at each side so that you can create one side of different colors. So for this, you're going to use the list. So to use the list directly, what you're going to do is this. Let's say that you want to, to create, um, to call each color, you can call it whatever you want. You can call it a uh, banana. But this is not very informative. So I'm just going to call it a color. For each color, in my list of colors is this list that is over here. For each of the colors, then do something. What are we going to do in order to change the color that the turtle has when drawing each side? This command here, and color with the parentheses, don't forget the parentheses, um, uses, should use, uh, it does exactly that, changes the color of the pen of Tommy. So inside here, there has to go something that connects to each of the items in the list so that we can tell at each step how many, um, how many, uh, so that we tell at, at each step how many, uh, what color the turtle should draw. Okay, and after that, don't forget to draw a line, actually draw something. So uh, you, you can move Tommy forward and then you can uh, make it turn right. So let's move to the, uh, uh, to the fifth uh, part of the assignment. So it says to change Tommy instructions at each step. So I'm asking you to change the parameters, to change what uh, you put in here, the numbers that go inside of the parentheses for Tommy forward and Tommy right to see what happens. Okay, you can add more steps or uh, you can also change the color um, uh, as, as you wish. So the goal of the fifth question is for you to play to play with the code that you created, okay? And the sixth part is somewhat optional. What I want you to do is to put that for loop, this is called a loop, inside another for loop. For, let's say, for number in range five. Okay, so now you see what we're going to do here is to go through each and every one of the colors that are included in our list colors. First red, then orange, then green, then blue, and finally pink. One time. And then, because this is inside of its own loop, it's going to do this thing five more times, creating a shape that is completely different. So this kind of thing is what we're going to be playing with uh, next Saturday. So that's why it's important that you get familiarized with uh, the notion of um, uh, creating for loops. All right. So don't forget, I'm going to put my uh, email account uh, right here so that, I, so that you can reach me if you encounter any problems. Okay. It's garcilaso.uriel at gmail.com. So you get a stop. Send me an email. I'll send you some materials so that we can figure it out together. Okay, so don't hesitate to contact me. 
I need to stay in touch with you. All right. So uh, happy coding, and I'll see you next Saturday. Bye, guys.